In 2024, global electric vehicle sales, including plug-in hybrids, surpassed 17 million units. Roughly 1.5 million units were sold in the US and 3.2 million in Europe. Meanwhile, China accounted for over 11.3 million sales, capturing more than 66% of the global market. The average price of an EV in the US is about $55,000, in Europe around $52,000, while in China it's just $30,000. The biggest cost driver? The battery, which makes up around 40% of the total vehicle price. And that's where things get interesting. In total, gigafactories around the world produced 867 gigawatt hours of battery cells for electric vehicles in 2024. Estimates show that China alone produced between 70% and 80% of that global supply. China effectively holds the key to the most critical component in the EV industry, the battery. By producing up to 80% of the world's EV battery cells, China has positioned itself as the country that dominates the most essential link in the global electric vehicle supply chain. So the real question is, how did China manage to leave the rest of the world behind? In the early 2000s, China was choking on toxic fumes. By 2005, Beijing had earned the unwelcome title of the smog capital of the world. The air was so toxic that concerns over athlete health at the 2008 Olympics led authorities to shut down factories and restrict traffic just to make the air breathable for a few weeks. A 2024 report projected that air pollution-related deaths in China could rise to 3.5 million annually if left unaddressed. One of the main causes of the smog was transportation. Nationwide, transportation accounted for up to 25% of all PM2.5 air pollution. In major cities like Beijing, that number often reached as high as 50%. Air filled with fine particulate matter led to a sharp rise in respiratory illnesses, strokes, and premature deaths. China had no choice. It had to act fast. The country made a bold move. Instead of upgrading the old, it chose to build from scratch. But to electrify a nation of over a billion people, China needed more than just cars. It needed batteries, millions of them. And making batteries require minerals specifically lithium, cobalt, and nickel. China wasn't just aiming to become the world's largest EV market, it wanted to control the entire value chain. From mining contracts in Africa to battery mega factories at home, the government laid the groundwork for an industrial revolution, one powered not by coal, but by chemistry. As part of a decades-long strategy, China began aggressively expanding its global footprint in the mining sector, acquiring stakes in lithium, cobalt, and nickel operations from South America to Africa. Today, the top five lithium-producing countries, Australia, Chile, China, Argentina, and Zimbabwe, account for nearly all of the world's output. And China's influence looms large, with around 90% of Zimbabwe's lithium being exported directly to China, as well as significant portions of Australia's and Argentina's output. While China itself ranks third in production, it dominates processing controlling approximately 65% of the world's lithium refining capacity. The story is similar for cobalt. Over 70% of the world's cobalt supply comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. But what's less visible is who's pulling the strings. Chinese companies own or operate more than half of the major cobalt mines in the DRC and oversee roughly 70% of global cobalt refining. With nickel another critical element for high-energy batteries, China has pursued a similar approach, especially in Indonesia the world's top nickel producer. Joint ventures and strategic partnerships have given China privileged access to this crucial metal. The result is staggering. Decades of deliberate industrial policy have given China near total dominance over the global battery supply chain. 
In a move to make electric vehicles more appealing to everyday citizens, Chinese authorities launched a nationwide campaign while tightening their grip on supply chains. In cities like Beijing and Shanghai, owning a gas-powered car became a luxury both financially and logistically. Back in 2016, the odds of winning a license plate in Beijing's lottery system were just 1 in 667. In Shanghai, a single plate could cost more than $10,000, and even after securing one, drivers of gas or diesel cars often face driving restrictions based on the day of the week. Each vehicle was assigned off-limit days depending on the last digit of its license plate. Plates ending in 1 and 6, for example, were banned on Mondays, 2 and 7 on Tuesdays, and so on. Electric vehicle owners, however, were completely exempt from these restrictions. They were issued special green license plates, no lottery, no auction. These plates allowed daily driving and, in some cases, came with free parking privileges. Additional incentives included tax breaks and simplified registration. This shift in policy had a major impact. By 2016, over 52% of EV owners in Beijing said they wouldn't have bought an electric car if it weren't for these incentives. In just a few years, EVs went from niche alternative to mainstream choice. The government didn't just incentivize consumers, it also heavily supported manufacturers. According to a study by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, China's electric vehicle industry received over $230 billion in government support from 2009 to 2023. This includes direct subsidies, tax breaks, land grants, and R&D funding. These massive investments helped Chinese automakers scale rapidly, lower prices, and dominate both domestic and global EV markets. The two largest Chinese electric vehicle battery makers produce more than half of all EV batteries in the world. In 2024, CATL led the field with 339 gigawatt hours of EV batteries, about 37.9% of global output, while BYD followed with 153 gigawatt hours, capturing 17.2% of the market. CATL is rapidly expanding in Europe. Construction is underway on a major battery plant in Spain, a 4.33 billion euro project with annual capacity projected at 50 gigawatt hours, and another facility in Hungary targeting 100 gigawatt hours. These join its already operational plant in Germany serving European automakers. BYD is also extending its footprint. An electric vehicle factory in Hungary, originally set to open in 2025, is now likely to begin mass production in 2026. Meanwhile, a $1 billion plant is under construction in Turkey, with plans to build 150,000 vehicles a year, starting in late 2026. Reports also suggest BYD is considering a facility in Germany. In recent years, a growing share of the market has shifted to LFP batteries, which avoid costly nickel and cobalt, offer excellent durability, and are 20 to 30% cheaper than traditional lithium ion packs. Chinese companies lead the world in LFP technology patents. In 2023, CATL unveiled an LFP battery capable of delivering about 600 kilometers. 370 miles of range on a 10-minute charge. BYD has also unveiled its own updated battery design, known as the Blade Battery. The Blade Battery uses an elongated, slim design to pack more cells into the same space, boosting driving range. And in March 2025, BYD announced an ultra-fast 1,000 kilowatt charging system capable of recharging an EV in just five minutes, as quickly as filling up a gas tank. For comparison, Tesla's most powerful charger today, the supercharger Vi4, delivers up to 500 kilowatts of charging power. The U.S. is now trying to close the gap. In Michigan, Ford is building a battery plant in Marshall licensing technology from CATL. The project has retained billions in potential tax incentives, which is critical according to Ford. 
for producing affordable EVs like future versions of the F-150 Lightning. Ford and its South Korean partner SK have also secured a $9.63 billion federal loan to build two more plants, with a combined capacity exceeding 120 gigawatt hours. Stellantis and Samsung received $7.5 billion in loans for two new battery plants, while Toyota's new North Carolina facility began production earlier this year. Yet, despite these investments, China's structural advantage will remain. Gigafactories can be built in just a few years, but the supply chains, feeding them mines, refineries, and processing plants take decades to develop. And China controls much of that upstream infrastructure. By some estimates, without fixing these bottlenecks, up to 78% of batteries assembled in the US and 74% in Europe by 2030 could still depend on Chinese materials or components. Even with expanding production in the US and Europe, China can already meet half of global vehicle demand. With its scale, lower costs, and technological edge, it's hard to see what could stop this industrial machine in the coming years.